invasive, non-native plant species have invaded the Sierra Nevada foothills. John Williams, representing the city of Roseville and also spearheading the Adopt the Creek program, along with Lydia Sizelove from the city of Rockland, lead a group of volunteers to investigate the infestation. Causing millions of dollars in damage, invasive plants clog our waterways, endanger our wildlife, erode stream banks, and can increase the intensity of wildfires. While our volunteers begin the arduous task of destroying invasive plants, John Williams identifies six other invasive species. So this is a, a really bad invasive as well. It's Chinese tallow tree. Uh, it was brought here during the time of the miners. Uh, from what I understand, it was used as a living fence post. It grows readily from cuttings. So uh, it's also a sacred tree to the Chinese. Um, and I, I believe it's called tallow tree. I think it has a lot of fat content. So they would render this down for fat back in the, in the old days and make soap with, with it and things like this. It was a really uh, important plant in the gold rush. But it's now taken over our waterways. It's uh, got this characteristic lit shaped leaf. It gets some red this time of year. Um, but really invasive, really aggressive. And uh, so the other, uh, the other invasives we have right here, we've got Himalayan blackberry that's just really ubiquitous in our waterways and all the open spaces here. It's the predominant species that, that's growing along our waterways and it's uh, it's uh, it's the blackberry that we eat you know real similar to a lolly berry or marion berry it's a good eating berry and so I suspect that's why it's here it escaped from gardens the birds spread it by seed it grows red readily by a, a seed or it, it makes runners by rhizome so it spreads really easy doesn't do much for bank or to hold the banks it's a bad problem. It's got thorns. It's kind of a, it's a big issue in California. It's taken over everything. And then um, this one here, we have the pampas grass. This is a import from uh, South America. Um, people use it ornamentally in landscaping. And uh, it's real pretty. You see it blooming right now. And it's a really hard one to get rid of. It spreads readily and it's uh, it's, it has a very narrow window that it can be killed with herbicides, um, typically between October and um, end of November. It's kind of the one window that it uptakes the herbicides and can kill it. It's not too hard to kill if you get it during that time, but even uh, there's a big root ball here, and, and even if you kill it, it's, it's taking up a lot of space here. So uh, really hard one because you need a backhoe or a team of, uh, labor to pull this out of here and there's still a big root mass so and you, as you can see there's uh, flowers over there they're all full of seeds and uh, kid, kids typically like to grab those and uh, stick them on the back of their bike and ride around and spread them all over the place so they're uh, they're just a it's a really tough plant to get rid of it's from South America originally and uh, uh, it takes over our coastal areas really bad in the eroded slope. Yeah, so this is a this is a red cisbania plant. It's in the, the pea family. It's a legume and they always have this characteristic leaf structure. It's a compound leaf unique to legumes. It fixes nitrogen from the atmosphere and by by the use of uh, root nodules and uh, so it puts nitrogen into the soil so it's really perfect invasive plant for something like a sandbar that has no nutrients to speak of. It's a great colonizer, and so it's, it's also the reason why it was imported to this country because it was used as a co cover crop. I'm not sure this is a rundo, but uh, a rundo donax is a giant reed. It was brought to this uh, country uh, to make rattan furniture, and uh, it's from Southeast Asia. It's apparently the favorite food of uh, Southeast Asian elephants, and it's a really big problem here. Like I said, I'm not sure this is a rundo, but it's definitely looks like it and it's got the same habit. It's a reed that's definitely doesn't look native and it's, uh, it spreads by uh, sections. Any, any section with a node can sprout and root. Um, it gets really big and heavy and falls down and takes and erodes the banks. Similar to over, over there we have some eroded banks. Arundo just doesn't do anything to help the banks. It has 
really uh, shallow rooted tubers and they fall down and take parts of the bank with them and it floats and it takes over big swaths. Nothing really eats it in this country and uh, it's a really bad invasive. It's, uh, it's taken over huge areas um, all over California and the west, western states. Okay, so this one is pokeweed, and uh, it's characteristic with this uh, really pretty red uh, stem. It's got what turns into really pretty uh, purple um, berries as well, and really big leaves. And uh, it's a native to the east east uh, coast. Here's the purple berries here. Uh, the entire plant's poisonous. Um, it, the pioneers, the Native Americans ate it, but you have to boil it three times, the, the um, foliage, to be able to eat it. It's supposed to taste like a turnip green or, or spinach. And there's a famous song, Poke Salad Annie, that Elvis did. It was originally by Tony Joe White, a uh, Cherokee guy. And uh, it's a problem in our watershed because it just doesn't have any natural enemies. There's nothing that really eats it. It's a, it's a poisonous plant, so it's harmful for livestock. It's harmful for... Uh, kids and people. It definitely looks like something that's edible with these purple berries, so um, pets and kids could eat them not knowing any better. And it's uh, about the only good thing about it is it's really easily identifiable. There's nothing native that looks even remotely like this. So uh, It's an annual plant, so as long as we cut it and, and uh, pull it out of the waterway, we can, we can do a good number on this one and get pretty effective results. The hyacinth was introduced into the United States as a gift from Japanese visitors to the 1884 New Orleans World's Fair. A native to South America, the plant is considered the most destructive introduced aquatic plant species in the world. Hyacinths can reproduce either through short runners or through seeds. Seeds germinate within just a few days or can remain dormant for up to 20 years. The plant's growth rate is one of the fastest of any aquatic plant species reproducing and doubling in size every 12 days. Just one acre of water hyacinths can create 500 tons of decaying plant matter. attacked by extraterrestrial plant life. How can I help? Thanks for volunteering. Here is where you can get more information on how to help. I'm Lydia with the City of Rockland. I'm here to discuss volunteering program for Adopt-A-Creek within the City of Rockland. Um, you can adopt a creek and sign up on our city's website. You just go on there and look for Adopt a Creek. Volunteering opportunities are under the Parks and Rec program, and there's opportunities for volunteering for all ages. You or your organization can volunteer for either short, one day events, or longer sessions through the Adopt a Creek program. For educators, Adopt a Creek offers an outstanding opportunity for students to gain practical experience in environmental science. The City of Roseville has a very active 
Adopt the Creek program. They can be reached at parks at roseville.ca.com. Protecting our watershed is everybody's responsibility. Please join us. It's a good idea. Maybe I can get the people at the neurosurgery clinic to help. Well, I'm a neurosurgeon, you know. This program has been brought to you by the Dry Creek Conservancy. Whoa, just a minute. Stop those credits. You did a good job on warning us about the dangers introduced by plants into our watershed, but, well, where can I get further information on which plants I should not plant in my watershed and backyard and what I can plant? Great questions. Here are three resources. The California Introduced Plant Council, the University of California at Davis, and Plant Right. Oh, and don't forget, the third Monday in July, when we should celebrate the California Invasive Weeds Awareness Week. I hope these suggestions will be of help. May I roll the credits now? Thanks for the added information. Roll those credits now. As I was saying, this program was produced by the Dry Creek Conservancy, dedicated to facilitating watershed restoration and education within the American River watershed. Help us preserve our heritage. Join us. Get involved. www.trycreekconservancy.org Other videos produced by the DCC concerning the American River watershed can be found at www.youtube.com slash user slash Michael Stark One or on user slash Roseville TV. Music